The 1960s was a time of extremes. The Vietnam War, the civil rights movement, and fast changes in American society were very volatile. Many women felt that women's issues, problems, and ideas were not adequately addressed in media. These issues included economic, political, social, and legal concerns of females of every race, political persuasion, and economic status. In 1971, Miss Magazine was founded by a group of feminists led by Gloria Steinem. Miss Magazine's purpose of publication was to provide a forum to communicate these concerns and a roadmap for the second wave of feminism. Women's magazines have always reflected the changing views and roles of their audiences. In the 18th and 19th centuries, most women's magazines were pretty boring and humorless. Most only showed off new embroidery patterns, sheet music, and shared updates on fashion. The most popular women's magazines at the time were the Ladies' Magazine, which was very popular in the late 1700s for its fashion notes, Godey's Lady Book that employed women to hand tint its fashion plates, and Ladies' Home Journal, which transformed the field of women's magazines in 1883. Many of these magazines continued to cover the same subjects and topics for centuries, but they finally widened their horizons in the late 1880s. The first women's movement largely took place in the 1840s to 1917. However, many still ponder or skip over what happened before the movement. The very famous Abigail Adams quote, I desire you would remember the ladies and be more generous and favorable to them than your ancestors, was first written in a letter from her to her husband John Adams while he was establishing laws for the new country. That quote is very well known and many say it lit a spark in women which started the very early first women's movement. The earliest women that were involved in the movement during the late 1700s questioned the status of women at that time, and many pushed for women's rights. The first attempt to organize a national movement for women's rights took place in July of 1848 in Seneca Falls, New York, when the first convention focusing on women's rights occurred. After the movement began to increase in popularity, the main women involved chose to focus mainly on women's suffrage. The 19th Amendment, which granted women suffrage, was first proposed to Congress in 1878 and was voted on in 1887, but was defeated in the Senate. By the 1900s, many states supported women's suffrage, but the women were still having a very hard time getting women's suffrage to be voted on. In 1919, there was already a woman in the House of Representatives, and many states had already granted their women residents the right to vote. In the summer of 1919, the big vote for the 19th Amendment took place and was luckily approved by Congress and was put into effect in 1920. During the 1930s and 1940s, feminism was pretty much forgotten about. With the Great Depression and many wars going on around the world, most women had no time to think about feminist issues while running in their household and taking care of their children. It's also noted that many men and women thought that feminism and women's movements were over since the 19th Amendment was passed, but luckily the future proved them wrong. In 1960, life as an American woman was very limited. From family to the workplace, women weren't allowed to have many choices for their lives, and everything was pretty much decided for them the day they were born. They were meant to follow one path, to marry in your 20s, start a family quickly, and spend the rest of your life taking care of the household. The only exception was if you decided to go into the workforce and become a nurse, teacher, or secretary. Betty Friedan published her book, The Feminine Mystique, in 1962, which captured the frustration and despair of many housewives who felt trapped and unfulfilled in their homes. The book struck a chord with many women, and most say The Feminine Mystique and Betty Friedan deserve the credit for kicking off the 1960s through 1970s women's movement. The movement which was also called the second wave of feminism, originally started by focusing on gaining workplace equality for all. There was a major variety of people involved. Everyone from every state, gender, race, class, age, and even political background were out participating. The most popular women in the movement and who served as spokespersons for the second wave were Gloria Steinem and Betty Friedan. The goal for the movement was to get the Equal Rights Amendment, also known as the ERA, passed and ratified. This amendment would grant equal rights for women and was exactly what the movement wanted to accomplish. I wouldn't have admitted the equality and inequality in my own life, even though I was continually discriminated against in journalism. Journalism, which allows women to write about women, 
and black people to write about black people and keeps the editorial decisions in white male hands. In the time leading up to the birth of Miss Magazine, very few women ran magazines. Even if they were running magazines, women were never allowed to write stories about what they felt was important. In early 1971, Gloria Steinem and activist Brenda Fian hosted a crowd of female journalists over to their separate apartments to have two different meetings. During these meetings, they spent all their time brainstorming ideas for possible new publications for women. At the meeting, the woman said, we can't get real stories about women published. After one meeting, Gloria Steinem came to the group and explained that she had been thinking of putting a newsletter together. In August of 1971, the New York Magazine editor offered them the opportunity of launching a new magazine in New York's pages as an insert in its year-end issue. In the time working up to the first issue, the women involved wanted to reach a large audience. As Gloria Steinem often says, we just wanted a magazine that interested us. In the first issue that was published, the main topics they covered were about sisterhood, raising children without gender roles, and a very popular statement that was signed by women that said they had had abortions. This statement included a card that invited women to fill in their names and send it back to the magazine. This received some backlash from many, one reporter even saying, I'll give it six months before they run out of things to say. Despite this, the first issue still managed to sell out nationwide in eight short days. Luckily, even with a major lack of funding, the magazine managed to stay afloat after this, and Ms. gained the title of the first national women's magazine that is run by women. The publication served as an entertainment outlet for women, but was also a major voice for women overall. While the women's movement continued, Ms. was an outlet for support and communicated plenty of updates and new ideas from the movement to women who would not normally get the chance to hear about them. This caused major growth of popularity in the movement, but also feminism overall by bringing women's movement topics into mainstream media. The Equal Rights Amendment was passed by Congress in 1972, but wasn't ratified by enough states and unfortunately missed the deadline. This caused the second wave feminism movement to come to an end. Now you could say that the impact of Miss Magazine and the second women's movement was life-changing and very impactful to our society, but also somewhat short-lived. However, today, Ms. Magazine continues to publish shocking articles about news and topics from all over the United States. It still continues to focus on mostly feminist and women's topics. Currently, many magazines are switching to digital and are completely getting rid of print. Others have chosen to put out less issues, changing from monthly to quarterly. No matter what, we can say that Ms. allowed female journalists to speak their minds and it drove change.